Hey, it's Dan Larson. Fabfilter Saturn is a must-have saturation plugin with lots of awesome features. In this video, I want to give you tips and tricks about some of my favorite things in this huge distortion device. Let me show you the first cool thing that I made from my own voice using Saturn. This wicked Riz bass was also brought into life using Saturn. And finally, the punchiness of this kick of this groove is again given by Saturn. After watching this video, I'm sure that you will be able to use Saturn in a very creative way, so you will be able to make very awesome and interesting and fat sounds. So, let's jump into it. After you see what this plugin can do, I'm sure you will want to add it to your library. You can grab Saturn back at the Warp Academy plugin store. I've dropped the direct link in the video for you. Let's start by analyzing this first little example. And the main sounds, the flute and the chords are basically made from my own voice. So this is how the first sound sounds. So this was the lead and actually the chords are made from the same sound also. The only thing I used here is an LP feeder to make the sound a little stabby or plucky. Okay, and now let's jump into it and let me show you how I used Fab Feeder Saturn to transform my own voice into that very nice flutey kind of thingy. So this is the original sound that I sang, basically. I know it sounds very silly, but Actually, this is me singing an ah kind of thing. The first step was I added a Fab Theater Pro R on full mix and I used a slightly short decay time to make the sound a little airier. Okay, after that I added a chorus. And this is the place where I used the first instance of Saturn. Now before we go forward, let me analyze the GUI a little to understand how the plugin works. So the first and the most important thing that you want to use here is obviously the drive knob. So the harder you push it up, the warmer your sound will turn into. And this is represented by the color of the interface, which is very, very likely. I pretty love it. Okay, so by double clicking on the knob or on the slider, you can type in your values manually. For example, just type in, I don't know, 55. So this is a very nice way to be very precise. You can set the level of your device and you have your tone sliders to set the top, the middle highs, the middle lows and the lows of your sound. And if you click on this plus button, you can see that Saturn just split your sound into two bands and you can use six bands, but that is basically more than you will ever need. So as you can see, I have no more options once I reached six bands. And the coolest part in this, that you can set different settings on the drive or on the level or on the dynamics or on the frequency, on the feedback and on the mix for every band. I think I don't need to over explain the behavior of these knobs, but just very briefly, you can set the mix of this band with this knob, with the mix knob. And the feedback is a very nice value to achieve that analog sound when you use, for example, a guitar cabinet or something. And you can set the frequency of the feedback and you can use some dynamics, some compression basically on your signal. And the second most important part here is this guy. Here you can set the algorithm of the saturation. So you can select from different stuff 
and all these are very very nice sounding algorithms to shape your sound. Now I'm using a smooth amp here which fits perfectly for our sound because this is a very smooth sound and I didn't want to have too harsh and too heavily driven signal added to my sound. In the next example we are going to add some modulation to our sound which you can add here clicking on this plus sign but about this a little later. Just before we get going, I would like to invite you to join the community by hitting subscribe and activating notifications. That way you won't miss a beat and you will get the heads up all the things as soon as I post them. Then after this, I added another instance of Saturn. By this time, I used a gentle saturation and this is all basically. I didn't push up to full throttle, but to around 80%. And I also added some level to it. And after it, I used a chorus to make the sound even more organic. So this is that I came up with after it, from this. And without the two instances of Saturn, this is how it sounds. So as you can hear, Saturn gives the fatness and the body and the character of this sound. And once I was finished with the sound, I just dropped it into a sampler, added another instance of Fab Theater Pro R reverb and a simple delay from Ableton Live stock plugins. And this is all that I did here. So I think we can move on to the next sound, this very chunky drum and bass stuff with the crunchy Reese bass. Okay, the main re sounds on itself sounds like this. Okay, so let me break down the sound for you. I use an operator to shape the sound from a single sign and the noise oscillator. And once I finish that, I added a saturation, Fab Theater Saturn, to make the sound really fat and really crazy. So without Saturn, this is how it sounds. So as you can hear, it's really just a sign with some noise. But with Saturn, it really just made the sound very gritty and very neuroish and very awesome. I added an EQ8 to chop off the middle basses, the middle highs and the very highs and an OTT to compress the sound to perfectness. But the most important part here is Saturn itself. Now, as you can see, I'm using some modulation to make the sound a little wobbly because without that it would just sound very flat. So what I did is click on this plus sign and used a new XLFO and took this pick whip and assigned it to the drive and to the level knob as you can see here. Once you've done that, these little boxes appear that shows the level of the modulation basically. So as you can see here that I'm modulating the output and the drive using the XLFO. Now here comes the fun side. I decided to use the pitch wheel on this sound. As you heard in the example, this heavily involves pitch bend, but the wobble of the LFO is static. It doesn't move with the frequency of my main sound. So I decided I had to change it and I wanted to add a new MIDI source, as you can see here. And with this MIDI source, you can do the same. You can use the pick whip and you can tell Saturn that you want to modulate the speed of the LFO using your MIDI informations. So once I did that, this little box appeared showing that I'm modulating the frequency of the LFO using some MIDI information based on the pitch band. I can use several MIDI informations, MIDI sources, for example, the mode wheel, the velocity, the aftertouch, the keyboard tracking and the controller. So once I said that, the only thing I had to do is play around with the amount of the modulation to set the sweet spot where all my pitch movement, my pitch band movement sounding pretty well. Now let me compare you how this bass sounds without this extra MIDI source on the pitch band. So to do that, the easiest way is to switch to, for example, the mode wheel. So from this point, I won't be having any MIDI informations coming from the pitch band and this will result this sound. So as you can hear, on the main frequency, on the main note, it sounded well, but as I turned up the pitch wheel, 
the whole modulation just falls apart and stopped sounding pretty nice. Now if I click back to the pitch band, you can see how different it sounds when I use the pitch band wheel. The speed of the LFO follows the frequency of my sound pretty well. So this is the trick for this very nice crunchy bass sound. Use an XLFO, modulate the drive and the level of Saturn and use a pitch band MIDI source to control the speed of the LFO. Now if you use Ableton Live, you have to make sure that Saturn receives the MIDI information that you will need to make this effect and for that you need an external instrument. First select the MIDI track that contains Saturn. This is the track called Reese here in my example and Ableton Live will automatically find the plugin that you will be able to send MIDI to. So these are the only things that you need to do to create this very nice effect. Okay and finally let's move to the third example which is about a kick that I made for this groove. Now this is how the kick sounds on itself and without Saturn. So I'm sure that you can hear how stronger the kick sounds with Saturn. And the funniest thing is that I used a very very slight touch to this kick by using a warm tape saturation mode and an envelope. So if you click here you can see an envelope generator and you can take the pick whip and just assign it to the drive. And this is what I did here and I cranked up the modulation range to the maximum and played around with this envelope. And this is very very cool because here I can decide which part of the kick drum I want to saturate. And I decided I just want to saturate the very very beginning of the part, the transient part. And let me show you how it sounds when I play around with the envelope here. So as you can hear, if I let Saturn saturate the whole sound or at least not only the transient part of the kick, the whole kick just falls apart and it won't sound very pleasing because it will heavily distort. So obviously this is not what we want, we just want it to saturate the transient part of the kick. Obviously what you can do here is set the attack time of the envelope generator and this is how it will sound after that. This can sound a little better if you don't crack it up too high, so let me pull it back. This can be an interesting thing, but I decided I just want to go a little shorter. And this sounds pretty well, I think. And what it does, it gives the kick a very nice click and a very nice fatness to the sound, especially on the middle bass area, which is very important, you know, you don't want to have only subby part on your kick, you want to generate a little more overtones on the middle bass area to make the sound a little harder and heavier. Obviously, you can play around with the saturation algorithms if you want to achieve different sounds, but I decided the warm tape will sound the best. Okay, so as you saw, Saturn has some very unique features that you can use to step up your game very efficiently. For example, saturate organic sounds like human voice to transform it into a completely different thing like a flute-like sound. Or use the envelope in the modulation section of Saturn to shape the transient of your kick, doesn't matter if it is self-made or is it a sample from a sample pack. Or add interesting modulation to your neuro basses using the LFO in Saturn that you can modulate further using any controller parameter like the pitch band wheel, the mode wheel, or even key tracking. So these were my tips on Fab Theater Saturn. If you enjoyed this video, go and check Warp Academy website for other cool videos, courses, and even audio software. Peace!